स्क्रीन नारद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा तो राघविंद प्रभु ओवर टू यू प्रभु जी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु बिफोर यू स्टार्ट यू कैन जस्ट म्यूट ऑल एवरीवन जस्ट सो दैट देयर इज नो बैकग्राउंड नॉइसेस थैंक यू Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yes, Prabhu ji. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mataji. Um, thank you, Mataji, for and Prabhu ji for the wonderful recitation, uh, and thank you all for giving me this uh, opportunity to um, to you know purify myself and and go through the chapter, uh, um, the wonderful chapter. In fact, I when I was studying this chapter, um, uh, I felt like this was a uh, you know. A, the chapter that gives a full krishna consciousness course uh like in brief but in in its full but in brief at the same time um yes okay so let's get started om agnana timirandasya agnana anjana shalakaya chakshuran militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वापदाति वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांशा श्रीरूप साग्रचात सह घन रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परचन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सह कना ललिता श्री विशाखान्विताश्या नम ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदाता स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वत देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणे वंचा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम हे कृष्णा करुण सिंधो दीनपंदो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते सप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरत्से नम नमो ब्रह्मण्य देवाय गो ब्राह्मण हिताय जगदीतृष्णा गोविंदय नमो नम जाय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैता गदाधार श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जयंधीर ये नष्टु अभद्रेशु नि भागवता सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नष्टी हरे कृष्णा डिवोटी Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Lakshmi. I seek your blessings um, so that I, um, you know, I, I say some some. Well, I try to summarize the chapter, but uh, please forgive 
um, any any mistakes that I make, it is all due to my anarchas. And if I share anything valuable, this is all due to Prabhupada's current Prabhupada's purport. Okay. Um, so today we are going through the chapter, our uh, sixth chapter of the first canto, overview of the first uh, sixth chapter. Um, so in the last chapter, um, in the fifth chapter, um, Navyasadeva was despondent and Narada appeared and Narada, uh, Narada Muni gave all the instructions that, uh, well, Narada, Narada Muni cleared the doubts of Vyasadeva and he gave the instructions for how to come out of uh, what is the reason for the despondency and, and what he should be doing, um, or what he should be doing to, to come over, uh, to, to get over that uh, for the welfare of all the future generations to come. Um, so Vyasadeva continued, um, uh, Vyasadeva inquired further um, uh, with Narada Muni. Um, so he asked, you know, the, uh, and after, because Narada Muni had, had actually bereaved uh, his life, what he was, uh, what he was in his previous life. So Vyasadeva inquired, uh, okay, what, after receiving the instructions from, um, from those Bhakti Vedantis, what did he do? Um, so after that initiation, you know, basically he, want, he was inquiring about the life after the initiation, and uh, and, uh, and moreover, uh, Narada Muni has a spiritual body. So he was inquiring. So from that life and to the next life where he uh, attained the spiritual body. So what was that transformation? How did he attain that transformation? Uh, and then the final question was, uh, um, you know, how did uh, how did Narada Muni remember? All that that happened in the previous life, uh, which happened uh, during the previous day of Brahma. Um, so these these are the questions. I mean, one may inquire. I mean, one may inquire uh, after reading these three, these questions. You know, why did we ask? They were asked these questions um, because Narada Muni had already given all, all the instructions and he had cleared all the doubts. Uh, so Prabhupada explains in the purport, um, you know, Vyasadeva was asked this question so that he could follow the footsteps of uh, Narada Muni. And this also gives, uh, the Prabhupada also clarifies that, you know, the, this is how one should, um, you know, one, sh one should take the, you know, uh, inquire, inquire submissively and uh, take the instructions from the spiritual master. And and those spirit, and those instructions one should take as a life and soul, uh, and uh, and you know uh, and live by those instructions in the and in the in the entire life. So the next few uh, verses deal. Um, Narada Muni talks about his mother, uh, and since he was the only child, um, so mother his mother was uh, dependent on him. And his mother's love um, in a bounding. So after receiving those instructions from the uh, spirit, from the Bhakti Vedanta, the spiritual masters, he had. I mean, he was desiring to leave, but his mother's love bound him. Um, so at this point, you know, he. I mean, he was for his at that age itself. He was very, very, uh, you know, responsible, a very responsible child. So he waited. Uh, he waited for Krishna to, you know, to basically make an arrangement that uh, so that he could pursue the instructions. Um, he, he could pursue the path that was uh, uh, that was recommended or instructed by those uh, by the Bhakti Vedantis. Um, so we can also see this, uh, you know, here, um, you know, the the faith, the full faith that Narada Muni had, uh, or even even in the in the previous life at that at such a very young age. Uh, and because of the association of the devotees, he, despite he had that, you know, the the spiritual realization, he was waiting for. He had, if he had full faith in Krishna to make an arrangement such that he could, you know, he could pursue those instructions. Uh, and then out of, uh, and then one night, um, you know, his mother was bitten by a serpent, uh, and then mother passed away. Uh, and Narada Muni at that age. Uh, I mean, he took that as a very, very special mercy from the Lord. Uh, we could see actually this uh, very similar episode um, in the life of many other devotees. For example, Narutam Das Thakur, 
he was bound by his uh, parents. Um, he was stopped from going to Vrindavan. And then he was waiting. He had full faith. He reposed his faith, full faith in Krishna that he would he would show the way. He would uh, he would show his mercy one way or the other. Uh, and then eventually it did happen. And, uh, um, so this question uh, at this point one question could rise. I mean, it's for in Narada Muni's previous life he was a child, um, and then his mother passed away, uh, and he was by himself. How could this be? perceived as a special mercy from the Lord. Um, in one of the lectures, His Holiness Radhana Swami answers that you know, the Krishna does not guarantee that um, does not guarantee that there will not be any problems in this material world. In fact, he actually guarantees the other way around, uh, where that there is, you know, wherever you go in this in the entire in the material world, even if you go to Brahmaloka, the problems are bound to the problems are bound to occur. Um, so, how could we see this as this kind of situations as a special mercy from the Lord? Um, so, Maharaj answers uh, the following way. He says, basically, the the having faith uh, in Krishna, having faith in the Lord that you know he's he's in control, and whatever he's doing is the is, is for his ultimate good. That faith in itself is a great, great blessing. So what Krishna is, when we say is a special mercy, basically even in those situations, that Krishna is protecting the, protecting one's faith. So uh, faith of the sincere devotees. So as we see in the life of Narada Muni in his previous life too, despite all the, you know, the, these, the so-called, um, you know, from the materialistic point of view, their problems, but uh, there is not even there is no incident to say that his faith was shaken. We can see some of those, um, uh, you know, the, the turbulence or the, the kind of ordeal that uh, that he goes through. So once his mother, uh, once his mother uh, uh, left her body, uh, so he he wandered around. He went through so many metropolitan metropolitan cities, towns, villages, farms. And basically, you know, he went through you know, various kinds of places. And these are the places where one could typically get attracted uh, or one, you know, these, the, kind of the desires for the economic development could, um, could arise. For example, he, uh, in one of the verses, it says that he went through gold mines, silver mines. And he went through some of the very, very beautiful places where uh, that, are, that are fit for uh, you know the residents of heavenly planets, but he was not attracted. Uh, none of them could attract him, and he also went through some of the very very dangerous forests. So he was completely dependent on Krishna's protection. Um, so he was he was taking all the challenges. He was he was very fearless. Uh, and then when Maharaj had come over a few days, a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, Radhana Swami Maharaj. He gave a very nice definition of uh, Vaishnava. Uh, Vaishnava is one who is all, who always ready to take on challenges and always expects miseries. So is that when the miseries actually come, you know, it is expected. So the uh, Vaishnavas take that as mercy, uh, mercy of the Lord. Um, uh, so and uh, of course, uh, coming back uh, to Narada's previous life, so he he traveled around. He wandered around, and he was relying. He was relying on the only the the nature to to provide, you know, whatever the whatever the body, whatever the needs, uh, whatever the body needs. Um, so Prabhupada here comments that it's uh, you know when the when when mendicants or these great saints come, you know, go go from house to house for begging. Or well, begging is the wrong word. Apologies for that. Uh, so to 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 uh, uh, seek the elements, it is not it is not I mean, it's not that he is actually begging. It is um, uh, you know he's because the those saints they basically they can they are relying completely on Krishna and and Krishna has provided so much in nature that you know that can meet the needs of the body. Uh, the the saintly personalities they go house to house to give the blessings um, to the households. So in this, uh, uh, and 
Narada Muni was already in this in this type of con in this uh, in this consciousness, and with that consciousness, he he started meditating on the lotus feet of Krishna uh, by following the instructions of the of his uh, spiritual masters. Um, so, being so much uh, so much surcharged in the transcendental love, um, you know, he had a very strong feeling of um, uh, you know very strong feeling of separation. Um, Prabhupada clarifies here that uh, you know when one reaches the stage of bhava, uh, one of the one of the symptoms, uh, one of the you know one of the ecstasies uh, ecstasies that um, that that comes out is the is the tears is the tears rolling down. Um, so Narada Muni was already was was at that stage, uh, and then in this state of when, when he was meditating in this state of consciousness, uh, Krishna out of his causeless mercy, um, out of his causeless mercy appeared manifested in his heart. And then when in Krishna, after there are wonderful descriptions in in, in the um, uh, in the verses about the ecstatic feelings that uh, that Narada Muni uh, at that time goes through, uh, it says that you know all parts of his body, every part of his body became separately enlivened to because in every sense, every sense wanted to serve the Lord. Um, I, you know, this is very very difficult to explain or even even to comprehend uh, what it actually uh means but uh, i mean we can just imagine that you know since uh, the krishna is the master of senses that every sense uh every sense wanted to you know wanted to serve the lord so when when krishna appeared in his heart uh you know all his material spanks and all the desires uh all were you know he basically uh you know he was fully fully satisfied but when just at that moment the Lord disappeared, uh, then Narada Muni, you know, Narada Muni, you know, whatever the process that he did, whatever the meditation that he did, with the same intensity, uh, with the same intensity, uh, he tried again. Uh, but then, um, unfortunately, uh, he could not see the Lord again. Um, so before going there, uh, before going to the next uh, few set of verses. Uh, Prabhupada here clarifies that you know in this in the, right in this episode you know one we can see the, all the nine stages of uh, well uh, up to bhava stage uh, all the you know the eight stages of the devotional service uh, Narada Muni had Shraddha, he had uh, he had full faith um, and then he had the association of Sadhu Sangha uh, he got he served them very sincerely he got the instruction he got the blessings he got the instructions. And then he practiced the uh, prescribed rules and regulations um, with sincerity of rules and regulations of devotional service. And because of that, he did not have, then the Anartha Rivruti happened for him. And that, uh, and then that led to the very fixed, uh, you know, um, Nishta, or the firm, uh, firm devotional service. And that led to Ruchi. So he was, uh, um, uh, you know, he was so much attached. He was so much attached to see the uh, longing to see the Lord again. So this way, um, the uh, you know the in very very uh, you know short description of uh, Narada Muni's previous life, we can see how the uh, how Narada Muni progressed from stage to stage. Uh, in 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 the um, in the path of devotional service. Um, okay, so now Narada Muni tried tried again and again and again, uh, and then out of again out of his causeless mercy, um, the Lord uh, the Lord of okay, did not appear, but um, but he spoke. Of course, his voice uh, and his his sound, the voice is not different from him. So he said, "He um, uh, Lord says that you will not see me again in this life." You know, when one is so much longing to see the Lord again, uh, and then Lord says, "No, you cannot see me. Uh, you cannot see me in this life." Uh, and then he actually clarifies why he cannot see me. Because he says, uh, "Those who are incomplete in service, immature, and not free from material things, cannot see me." Um, so this, this, uh, you know, when I first read this verse, um, 
this was uh, I could not I could not I could not completely understand how Narada Muni was incomplete in service. Uh, Prabhupada, of course, as always, you know, Prabhupada knows exactly what are the questions that uh, that the um, you know, that the readers will will encounter while reading these verses. So Prabhupada uh, very expertly clarifies that here the of course one must get rid of the lower modes of nature first, and which uh, Narada Muni obviously got rid of. Uh, but then there is you now the searching for the Lord in the in the forest. Is is actually in the mode of uh, goodness. Uh, a pure devotee, uh, a pure devotee, like uh, even the Narada Muni in the next Narada Muni, actually when he became Narada Muni uh, or Prahlad, and uh, the pure devotees, they are always engaged in in preaching the glories of the Lord. So this this is what uh, you know. This is what was um, what was missing. Um, in Narada Muni's uh, previous life, so that's that's why uh, you know, the Lord said, you know, he was incomplete in the service, and that's why he could not see him uh, again in that life. Um, and then Lord also clarified that you know why um, why he appeared. He basically appeared to increase Narada Muni's desire uh, desire for him. So it is that is the nature of the uh, you know nature of the transcendental uh, devotional service. Which the more one engages in the devotional service, the more one hankers for it. Um, uh, and Krishna, Krishna, Krishna promises that by engaging in devotional service, even for a very few days, you know one attains firm and fixed intelligence in Krishna. Um, so here there was there was at the beginning there was one question about. How one could remember, um, and how Narada Muni could remember his previous life, uh, and all the devotion service that he has um, that that he has done. Um, so he, Krishna here clarifies that you know the time factor cannot destroy one's devotion service. Uh, he says, "By my mercy, your memory will continue even at the time of creation and annihilation." So this answers the question that. Even the Narada Muni's previous life was um, Narada Muni's previous life was in the previous days of Brahma, uh, but Narada Muni still remembered all of um, in all of it. Um, uh, and Krishna also goes and gives another benediction or another promise that you know, this devotional service uh, eventually makes one become uh, eligible to be an associate of the Lord. Um, so since uh, 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 um, since that episode, Narada Muni continued uh, traveling all over the earth, um, continuously chanting Krishna's names and uh, and uh, and singing the glories of uh, glories of Krishna and, and the past names of Krishna. Uh, and um, in one of the verses, it says that you know, uh, Narada Muni was unenvious, and Prabhupada clarifies that you know. They, they, they are pure devotees. They don't. They really. There is no reason to be envious of anyone because they they actually possess the greatest, the Lord. Um, uh, so, uh, so in the, in this way, Kriya Narada Muni was fully absorbed, um, fully absorbed, and he was um, freed from all the material things. Um, so when he left the when it when the time came to leave his material body, um, there is one nice uh, um, description and in, in, in one of the verses it says that it happened like the um, like the lightning and the illumination. It's not like they are two different; they are two separate things. It's basically as in when the lightning happens, you have the illumination at the same time. So uh, as soon as he left the material body, he immediately attain the attain the spiritual body um so for pure devotees even in the material body was they were they are already they have the spiritualized body and then when they leave that material body they they immediately uh, attain the spiritual body so and then at the end of the uh, um millennium uh, narada muni says he has he entered into lord narayana uh, along with brahma 
uh, again, this is Narada Muni clarifying to that question how um, about his uh, how about how he got the spiritual body and about how he remembered all the things that has happened. Um, so, yeah, it says that Brahma, when after the 4.3 billion years when Brahma awoke, awoke again, uh, Narada Muni also appeared with, along with uh, other rishis. And since then, he has been continuously traveling in both. Um, you know, he does not need any any visa to go from material to spiritual, spiritual to material worlds. So he's been traveling uh, in both worlds, uh, singing the glories of the Lord with his vena. Um, so this was specifically the verse thirty three. Specifically, talks about the you know the power of uh, pure chanting. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to read the verse. I, I, will, I don't think I'll be able to clar clarify it any better. Um, it says, The Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, whose glories and activities are pleasing to hear, at once appears on the seat of my heart, as if uh, as if called for as soon as I begin to chant his holy activities. So this is sort of the Narada Muni, is, uh, Narada Muni expressed how you know, when he was chanting, how he felt that you know, now Krishna was seated, uh, Krishna uh, seated on his heart, on, on, on his heart when, whenever he was uh, chanting the, uh, whenever chanting his holy names. So this is, this just shows how, you know, how, um, you know, how powerful, uh, how powerful the chanting is. If, if we can do that in, the, in a very pure consciousness, you know, it is, Lord is attracted, Lord is, uh, you know, Lord is seated, and Lord will be seated in our hearts. It is, uh, I think, one of the, in in one day what he said. It is like you are our, you know, personal time, personal time with the Lord. If uh, just imagine if he, if if the you know, if, if King gives an appointment to us, if the King Charles gives an appointment to us, and then he's. Um, uh, and when we are with his association or in, in his company, you know, we won't be distracted. We won't be thinking of something else because you know it is so rare to get uh, to get his attention, to get his appointment. Uh, and now this is just with with the with the so-called um, you know the king for so-called king for this uh, for this country. Just imagine we are getting an appointment with uh, Lord. Krishna uh, and we have almost two. We have an appointment in the morning when during our chanting, uh, and then we don't pay attention to him. You know, it just uh, you know. But that that what he was explaining. It, it it you know. It just imagine how how painful for Krishna. How painful it will be for Krishna when you invite him and then you just don't pay attention to him. Um, attention to his holy names. Um, yeah, so the pure devotee who is, uh, you know, anything, any, any, any service that, um, um, any pure devotee, whenever, whenever, when they are engaged in any, uh, any transcendental service, you know, they can clearly, uh, experience the presence of the Lord, uh, as, as, as we saw in this example of, uh, Narada Muni experiencing the Lord's presence, uh, when he was chanting. Um, so finally, uh, the, uh, the last slide. Um, um, so he, um, um, I mean, he of course he, he they, after attaining the spiritual body, he was uh, um, he was he was traveling all around, uh, glory, uh, glorifying the glorifying the past times of the Lord, uh, and it says that Krishna Harikata is the most suitable boat. Uh, to cross to cross the to cross the material ocean, and this is this boat is not is unlike the material boat where this boat our acharyas have have left this boat for all of us in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. Prandara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. So this uh, this is the you know this is the most sublime boat that we that we all have the opportunity to. And Prabhupada's mercy, uh, we have that in, in the languages that we can that we uh, can easily understand. Um, so in the in the purport for this verse, uh, Prabhupada says that you know once 
uh, once it decides, uh, basically, you know, the, the the desire to speak or the feeling, thinking, desire to be engaged in certain in some activity, you know, these these things will will not stop. This is just not possible to stop them. So all we need to do is uh, change the subject matter. So continue all these uh, activities, but dovetail all these activities um, in in the service of the Lord. Um, and that is, uh, and that's why we have Srimad Bhagavatam for to give so many examples of how, how you know, various devotees have dovetailed their um, their activities in the service of the Lord. Um, so, uh, and as 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 we as um, as this chapter clearly shows how Narada Muni has experienced it, um, you know, by engaging in in his service. Uh, Narada Muni clearly, uh, briefly talks about the other parts, uh, primarily the Ashtanga Yoga. Um, uh, he says the uh, you know one can by by the other approach by using the other approaches, one can restrain senses, uh, but uh, it does not. You know that basically that will not last long because you don't have the satisfaction. In the uh, we as part and parcel of the Lord, we you know we seek we seek that ananda, we seek that bliss. Um, so without experiencing that bliss, you know the things cannot uh, things get cannot go um, go on for long. Um, so finally, after giving these, uh, after explaining the the birth and activities of um, of uh, of his life, of his previous life, uh, and and the current life, Narada Muni left. And it and towards the end in that verse it says uh, at his free will. Um, Prabhupada clarifies that it's the um, um, Prabhupada clarifies that it's the you know the nobody we 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 think we are free but we we really are we really are not free only we can be completely free only when we attain uh, when we when we attain the spiritual body. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention one one point in the for the uh, uh, for the previous verse, which uh, uh, the Prabhupada clarifies that the other parts, for example, the Ashtanga Yoga that uh, that is mentioned here, um, he gives the example of Vishwamitra and Haridas Thakur. So Vishwamitra, des you know, despite practicing that yoga for uh, you know, several thousands of years, he could not resist. Um, when when he you know we could not resist that obtained temptation, uh, whereas Haridas Thakur uh, could easily do it. Um, um, sorry, I, I had for, forgot to mention that point. So the coming back to the last point, um, you know the freedom, the freedom surrendered to the Lord. If we surrender our freedom to the Lord, if we surrender our will to the uh, to the Lord, then we get the. Uh, that's when we actually we are actually uh, truly free. Okay, um, so I thought I had thirty minutes. I tried to fit um, the full chapter in this thirty minutes. Um, any comments, questions? So uh, there are we have very exalted um, devotees in the uh, in the assembly, so they can take the questions. But any comments and suggestions, please, um, please let me know. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Then when Pranam, uh, thank Hare you for Pranam. a wonderful class, very nourishing class. I just wanted to share something that I heard this morning. Um, uh, Yaduvar um, uh, Prabhu and um, Vishashika uh, Prabhu, uh, they were both, Vishaka Mataji were both uh, talking about their special moments with Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. And um, they both said, we asked them, what was the most dearest experience you had with uh, Srila Prabhupada? And both of them talked about how in the morning when they sat and chanting, and if ever Srila Prabhupada would pass them, he would just stop, listen, and then say, thank you. Meaning that mm -hmm. uh, that was the highest service anyone could offer to Srila Prabhupada and to Sri Krishna, Radha Krishna. So that was, he loved uh, anyone when he saw them chanting, he just loved it. He re really loved it. So I thought he was just talking about the potency of uh, chanting and how important it is. So I thought I'll share this pastime. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji.
Thank you so much, Matthew. Thank you for sharing. Um, any other comments? Uh, I was just curious, was there any particular reason why uh, Narad Muni was particularly chosen to be, you know, kind of given a sample of the spiritual um, ecstasy and then withdrawn just to let him practice and to reach that level again? Um, I, I, I think I, I remember um, either uh, probably in one of the purports that it is basically out of his causeless mercy um, that Lord Lord has done that. I mean, with we, with the, with the different devotees that that we come across in Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord out of his causeless mercy has done uh, uh, in a sure is mer mercy in a different ways. So the exact same steps that Narada Muni repeated after the first uh, after the first time when the Lord appeared. For the same exact step, same intensity, same love. Um, so Krishna did not appear. Um, so why did Krishna appear in the first time? Basically, it is out of his causeless mercy that um, that you know he wanted, he desired to increase Narada Muni's love for him. Uh, but why he was chosen, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not, why Narada Muni was chosen to be given his special mercy in this way. I, I don't have an answer to that question, um, but I do remember reading uh, in the purport that it is out of his causeless mercy, where is, um, he shows his causeless, uh, causeless mercy in different ways to different devotees at different times. Okay, I, but, uh, I, but, I, I just meant to ask if there is anything that we can do to attract such mercy upon us, uh, probably just that's it. Yeah, so I was listening to uh, Burijan Prabhu's lecture on this chapter. He said that, yes, it is out of causeless mercy, but does it mean that, uh, you know, we are, you know, it is completely random that, you know, we don't have a hope? Because it's, uh, if, it is out of, if it is out of his causeless mercy, then, you know, there could be, um, someone could say that, yeah, maybe, you know, we don't have a hope, or maybe it is just true, you know, too random, or it is just, you know, we are nowhere in the list. Um, so he says that, of course, he did out of his causeless mercy, but at the same time, to in order for a Lord to, you know, to, in order to be eligible to actually be given that mercy, we um, we we need to do our sadhana sincerely. Um, so as we as we saw in uh, in in Narada Muni's previous life, of course, he was no ordinary soul, even at the age of at the age of five year old. Um, he was a very uh, responsible child at that age, and then he had taken his inst the instructions of uh, his spiritual masters very seriously, and he has served them very seriously. And he had he he kept his desire to follow the path that was shown by his spiritual masters in his heart, and he was he had full faith in Krishna that one day Krishna will show him the path. Uh, and then he waited very patiently for that opportunity. And then when that opportunity came, uh, he pursued the path. He had, he was, uh, he went through so many temptations, well, temptations meaning the, the so-called material opulences that uh, what one typically gets attracted to, but he was, he was uh, not attracted. So, I, so we can see that, you know, he's, he was no ordinary soul, even in the previous life. Uh, and he had certainly done, a, a, you know, his from his side. Uh, he was basically certainly done his part, uh, and then I can only say that he was waiting for the causeless mercy from him, from from the Lord. I, I mean, if, if I were to, I mean, if I were to take, um, well, the the biggest lesson from. Um, you know, for me, uh, from this episode is the you know is the faith, is the is the unflinching faith that he had in Krishna at uh, at that age. And that is, uh, you know, if one has such kind of faith, you know, one would be truly fearless and be fully engaged in the service of the Lord. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Um, any other uh, suggestions, comments? Hare Krishna Prabhu, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, my observation with all this story, um, uh, Narad Muni was only five years old when he had uh, the knowledge by the sages. I mean, now in this our age or even before, a five-year-old child would not, you know, get so much understanding of the whole, you know, the whole thing, how he kind of a... Um, carried on with his life, even after mother, you know, when he was young, he had nobody. And it, it is all um, Krishna's arrangement for us to see how one can develop the love of Krishna. He was a chosen one. You know, that's a, I mean, not, he was not an ordinary person. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it is, I mean, that my understanding is just that Krishna chose persons that for us to give the lesson, the ultimate lesson of our life. Um, that's my understanding. It wouldn't be anybody else. I just feel it was just Narad Muni. Yes. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Of course, from um, um, in Prabhupada in, in, in clarifies that we don't uh, you know, we need to follow the footsteps of uh, Narada Muni how, uh, in terms of the faith in Krishna, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, in terms of his chanting, in terms of preaching all over the world, uh, you know, preaching to whoever, whoever he came across. But um, Prabhupada says that, you know, we don't, we don't need to go, uh, we don't need to go to forests. Um, it's basically, uh, you know, we can, we, I mean, he, we can follow, he, he, Prabhupada recommends us, like for this age, they, 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 you know, they're going to the forest and all is, is, is not recommended. It is, um, you know, it is the preaching. It is the preaching that is, uh, that is, that is the Sankirt, basically the Sankirtan moment as, as, as prescribed by Lord Ch uh, Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that is the is the is the need of the need of the hour. That is the yoga dharma. Yes, thank you. So I have. Uh, I mean, if no, there are no further comments, I have one question to. Um, um, for for all of you, uh, this is the first time. I, I mean, I I've not heard anyone. I, I missed the previous uh, chapter overviews. So, is this the way chapter overview is done? That um, I mean, I I had a very brief conversation with Vivanam um, Prabhu. He had recommended following the um, the summary that uh, you know His Grace Gauranga Dasham Prabhu gives. Uh, but I, I wanted to seek your suggestions um, about how the summaries are typically done in these sessions. Hi, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, normally it is done like that at the end of the chapter mm -hmm. and uh, the speaker sort of goes briefly over the all the verses like the way you've done. Yeah, that's the way. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Prabhuji. You're doing a good pronounce. Thank you for a wonderful class. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. If, I, if I may suggest, if uh, a humble sure. request, sure. I think what, what we find is that when we're going through, because we get a lot of summaries done on route as well, so it's nice to have a summary of what we read, but I think it would be more um, potent if we could have the philosophical summary of the philosophy of what we should have learned from this from a bhakti perspective from a devotional practice perspective 
um, as opposed to just the storyline being summarized that we've, because we, 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 different um, uh, facilitators, because we have different facilitators every day, quite often repeat the summary. So in the course of the, the 30 day, roughly 35, 37, 40 day, depending on the length of the chapter, we get quite a lot of summaries, but we don't pick up on the, you know, the, the, the important philosophical and bhakti lessons we should be learning. So it would be nice to, to get that so that it acts as an ad memoir at the end of the chapter as to what the, the uh, what Prabhupada is really trying to tell us or what we should take away as a, as a main sound bite. That would be, I think, quite useful. Just my humble suggestion, Prabhupada. Of course, it's entirely up to the management team of uh, how this is run, but uh, just a suggestion. Yeah, thank you so much, Prabhuji. Uh, so I think it's a very, very valid point, good point. Because um, as you said, the um, you know the verses are being recited every day, so the storyline is very familiar already. Um, yeah, and then the key takeaways. Uh, I think that's a very good point to you know to focus on the key takeaways and how we. What is the what are the learning points for our devotional service, and what we can apply um, into our devotional service? I think that's, uh, that's a very good point. Too. Thank you, Prabhuji. Given another opportunity, I will, uh, I will, I will, I will try to, I will endeavor to um, uh, focus on that aspect. Sorry, Prabhuji, it wasn't meant as a criticism. It was a very good mm -hmm. summary. No, 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 thanks for giving me. So it was just a suggestion in terms of uh, how we might be able to increase the bhakti content uh, yeah. a little more through the philosophical understanding. So please, uh, please forgive me. I didn't mean to. It wasn't meant as a criticism at all. It was a very no, good. No, 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 no. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the suggestion, and thank you for it. that. Is actually a blessing to me. Um, okay, any other comments? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, I just wanted to inquire about, you know, Narad Muni is to consume remnants of the food of, of the sages. Uh, so how significant is that and what does it exactly mean? Um... I have seen this practice. Uh, uh, I've seen this practice um, from many, many devotees uh, in our community. Um, when our Maharajis uh, visit a particular place, the remnants, uh, devotees are very, very eagerly looking forward uh, for the remnants. Um, I, I don't, uh, please forgive me that I don't have any. Uh, you know, scriptural codes um, to to um, to validate or to basically you know, emphasize the power of uh, the taking the remnants. I have I've just seen and observed um, this practice being done. Uh, if anyone in the um, in in the sangha can enlighten us about any references in the scriptures or any quotes from Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Hare Prabhuji. Krishna. Hare Krishna. I don't, I, don't, um, I don't have quotes from the Sastras, but what I know, uh, when our gurus, when they leave um, the remnants, it's kind of blessing. It's Maha Maha Prashad. When you offer to to the Lord, it's, it becomes Maha, but when Guru leaves, because Guru takes after the Lord, right? So that becomes Maha, Maha. And, and I remember all, when my Guru was around, we would fight for the little tiny bit, just to get the mercy. So that is, uh, that is what it is said. Also, Narad Muni, he never took, he asked once, in the Sastra is written, he asked once, and with the permission of the Guru, he could take it. That's how he got the blessing. But Narad Muni, he was he was a pure soul. He was a great devotee himself. So 
we cannot be equal to Naradmuni, but yet, if we get the chance to take the, the remnant of a guru, that would be a blessing. Also, I remember when I was not initiated, but I was, uh, I was aspiring for my guru. I remember one god sister, she refused to give me maha. Even I tendered my hand, she said, no, you're not initiated, right? But then after I got initiated, I would, I would wait for that maha all the time. Okay, Hare mm. Krishna. Hare Krishna. I remember one past time in this regard where uh, um, I think Lord Shiva, he takes the he takes the he gets the opportunity to take the remnants from uh, Vishnu's plate, and then he like he was after taking the remnants after taking the uh, from from Vishnu's uh, remnants from the plate. Um, you know, he was so ecstatic. He was so ecstatic. And then when he comes, um, uh, when he comes to Parvati Devi, uh, Parvati Devi asks him, you know, what is the reason for, you know, why are you so ec ecstatic today? Uh, and then he gives the reason. He gives the reason. And then she asks, you know, how how did you forget about me? Can you, is there is there at least one grain, one you know, one grain for me? And he even she even checks the you know the uh, you know hands and nails to see if there is one green star. Um, so this is the and this is the maha. This is now what we speak of maha maha as Mataji as you as you said maha maha is even more potent uh, than the maha. Thank yeah. you, Prabhu. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't have scriptural. Um, uh, quotes either, but the the essence, as we learn, and I'm sure you know um, more than I, is the the food or, or un is actually a conductor of um, karma and consciousness, which is why the whole philosophy of who cooks the food and how it's mm. prepared and etc. It is a conductor of karma, blessings, etc. So when it's Krishna's ma, we're getting spiritual. Um, value from it and then when it becomes Maha Maha where actually the reason why uh, Narad Muni asks permission is we are supposed to ask permission because there is consciousness transfer and the, the Guru actually also picks up, is in danger of picking up some of our consciousness um, and, and our karma in the other direction as well which is why we're actually supposed to ask permission of saints before we take the Maha um, because it has to be through their blessings, then it becomes more potent. So there's there's this karmic transfer and consciousness transfer and spiritual transfer through an, which is which is why we take maha and maha maha is even more potent because guru's special consciousness comes through that maha maha. So. Thank you, Prabhuji. That's Thank not, you, now Prabhuji. I now I I uh, realize why. My God, sister, didn't give me when I was not initiated. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah, thank you, Prabhuji. I just like to add on one of the scientific aspect to this one, uh, Prabhuji. Um, scientifically, when uh, the saliva or the hair or the skin, um, the nails generally contains the DNA of a person. And when we know Guru is full of spiritual potency and they're always in the ecstasy. Uh, from within, uh, always remembering the Lord. So their entire body, the blood, and end-to-end -end everything that lies within the body, mind, and soul is full of Krishna consciousness and the ecstasy. And when the DNA, uh, I mean, as a scientifically stands for through the saliva, which comes through the food that they've eaten, and the remnants, whoever is eats that remnant, so the DNA transfer happens, which again contains the energy and the spiritual ecstasy and the purity that the, you know, Guru Maharaj holds. So when that gets transferred to us, it is contagious. So, you know, it's like, a, yeah, as is a flow of the energy and the spiritual ecstasy and the, yeah, vibrations as well. So that, that elevates us to a greater extent. So just something that I'm aware Thank of you. scientifically, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Okay. Um, 
if there are no further comments, we can end here. Uh, yes, Madam. Like, you know, Maha Maha just wanted to extend a little bit. Like uh -huh. Mother Parvati, you know, she asked for it and uh, because Lord Shiva did not have it. And then she also, then she did some meditation and said, why you meditate? Because she, she wants some Mahaprasad because she was not given. Mm. So then the Lord gives her uh, the boon that, you know, in uh, Jagannath Puri, mm -hmm. yes. all the time when Lord's Prasad first goes to uh, Mother Durga, I've forgotten the name of, you know, what Mother Parvati's name is there. But, mm. you know, the, always that Prasad goes to her. And First, then yeah. it distributed, so then it becomes Maha Maha Prashad. Mm. So then now she gets the whole plate, not only just grains. So then she was satisfied. Hare yes. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you very much. Okay. Srila Prabhupada ki chai. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki chai. Jai. Om Thank you very much for the session, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna.